Hello students and welcome back to bankexamstudy.com my name is Ramandeep Singh and today we are going to do the financial awareness for the month of July 2024 in MCQ format in MCQ format we are going to do roughly 80 questions we are going to do today so that will cover the entire financial awareness for the month of July 2024 so let's start the session Before starting let me tell you IBPS RRB scale 2 and scale 3 course is available on bankexamstudy.com in which we are providing video classes notes quizzes and the test series right link to join the course is available in the description and this is our whatsapp number where you can ask your doubts okay so let's move on to the question number 1 according to the brand finance india uh 100 report which company retained its position as india's most valuable brand it's tata group right so tata group it's a most valuable brand according to brand finance india 100 what is the primary purpose of aif interest subvention portal as a name suggests it automate and expedite the settlement of interest subvention claim under the agriculture infrastructure fund who authored the biography title venkaiya naidu naidu life in service it's shri s nagesh kumar it's a general awareness question um, but anyways we covered it which award did bank of india win for the financial year 2023 24 atal pension yojana annual award it's important atal en pension yojana annual award uh, bank of india won this particular award okay let's move forward What is the main objective of e sankhya ki portal launched by Ministry of uh, Statistic and Program Implementation to improve user experience and data accessibility so e sankhya ki portal by Ministry of Statistic and uh, Statistic Program uh, Implementation to improve user experience and accessibility What is the rank of India in AI preparedness index? First of all, you sh you should know who releases this particular index. Uh, which organization releases the AI PI index? You should know that. So India's rank is seventy two among one seventy four countries. So AI preparedness index is an initiative by IMF, International Monetary Fund. So please remember that. What is the name of uh, collaborative initiative between RBI and Asian countries for cross border retail payments it's a project link What is the primary objective of finquery uh, initiative by RBI to help fintech companies navigate the regulatory environment so finquery What is the new limit set by SEB for basic service DMAT account BSDA so Uh, on the you know you might have heard of bsbda account similarly the uh, there is bsd account bsbda is for banking and bsda this is a kind of account where uh, you know you get less services on very low cost right now the new limit set by sebi for basic service dmat account it's from first of, from first of september 2024 the new limit is 10 lakh rupees so the basic service dmat account the limit is 10 lakh ru rupees you get basic services from the broker you do not get the advisory service the charges are minimum right so these are the the bs uh, the bsda accounts okay very important so bsda account it's a type of dmat account uh, uh, designed to encourage small investors right there is lower cost lower maintenance charges limited transaction simplified services right who is hosting global partnership on intelligence artificial intelligence india is hosting the global partnership on intelligence uh, in, uh, artificial intelligence summit what award did lnt metro rail uh, received on 1st of july 2024 golden peacock award for safety excellence Where did the 86th session of executive committee of codex elementary uh, commission took place it's at rome what is the main objective of seher program to create awareness about finances and credit management among women entrepreneurs 
शहर अंडर द न्यू सेबी गाइडलाइंस हाउ मेनी वर्किंग डेज डू कंपनीज हैव टू रिक्वेस्ट अ रिव्यू और अपील टू द क्रेडिट रेटिंग डिसीजन विद इन थ्री वर्किंग डेज द कंपनीज कैन आस्क फॉर अ रिव्यू ओके Which scheme launched by uh, Shri Amit Shah provides 50% assistance to farmers for purchasing nano fertilizers? AGR2 scheme. Who launched Lifestyle for Sustainability campaign? President of India, Shri Mati Draupadi Murmu, right? So it's a national campaign by Brahm Kumaris. which is primary objective of project pari initiated by ministry of culture and government of india to beautify public spaces using millennia old artistic traditions who launched the fifth phase of digital shakti campaign so it's by the national commission for women and cyber peace foundation which organization collaborated for tree plantation drive called grow with trees bsf and sbi right what is the name of russia's highest civilian award uh, that pm narendra modi got its order of uh, saint indriu and apostle the first called and the apostle the order of saint indri and the apostle what gains 2024 means is grsc accelerated innovation nurturing scheme right under the new permission of rbi banks can obtain fresh rating from from the brickworks rating for banks for loans up to 250 crores so brickworks it's a credit rating agency right in the past rbi barred the brickworks uh, from providing the credit rating for to the companies now rbi allowed brickworks to do the credit rating business up to 250 crore rupees loan right so for loans up to 250 crores brickwork can provide the credit rating who is the principal who is the principal sponsor for indian contingent at 2024 paris olympics it's adani group what does uh, me devis stand for medical devices international system what is the annual limit for residents to invest out uh, outside india through the foreign currency account at the gift city uh, gift ifsc under the lrs LR, under lrs the limit is any anyways 250 uh, 1000 2 lakh and 50000 uh, us dollars that is a limit under the lrs liberalized remittance scheme how many jobs were created in the manufacturing and service sector uh, during 20 uh, financial year 2014 to 23 according to sbi 89 million not that important which state awarded the best state in horticulture 2024 it's nagaland where was a second bimstick foreign minister retreated uh, retreat held it's at new delhi on which date the central government of india declare samvidhan hatya divas so june 25th samvidhan hatya divas on this date emergency was declared by indira gandhi in india in 1975 samvidhan hatya divas what was india's overall sdg score sustainable development growth score in 2023 24 sdg india index 71 compared to 66 and 22 21 what is uh, what was all india cpi for june 2024 so it's 190.2 that's a cpi uh, it's 192.2 for the rural areas 187.8 for the urban areas which organization launched one scientist to one product initiative icar launched this uh, initiative What is the new limit on sponsor investment for passive mutual funds excluding equity oriented ETF and index funds So a sponsor can be can invest 25% of the net assets okay So the max uh, amount for example ICICI is there ICICI 
bank is there they also have a mutual fund group right mutual fund uh, amc so the uh, the am the amc can invest maximum 25 percent of their assets in the sponsor in the icici bank icici lombard icici general insurance the maximum that amc can invest is 25 percent of their amc right 25 percent of their funds of the received funds what uh, position does india hold globally in terms of forest area gains according to the recent fao report it's third in the kantar brand inclusion index 2024 what is india's global ranking for brand inclusivity it's 19th and what is the main aim of one yojana uh, to enhance green covers across the state from urban areas to rural villages which indian state has become the first to introduce gep index it's uttarakhand so what is gep index gross environment product index gep index and uttarakhand adopted it what is the estimated real gdp growth for india in 2024-25 according to the economic survey 23-24 it's 6.5 to 7 percent according to the economic survey according to the updated guidelines of irdai how are long-term motor insurance policies are now aligned with the standard one-year motor insurance policies right so income tax day is observed on 24th of july right how much does Asian uh, Development Bank approve loan amount to expand Nagpur's metro rail network $200 million? What was the theme of 9th Governing Council meeting of Niti Aayog? It was Viksit Bharat at uh, 247, uh, at 47, right? So which theme was highlighted at 57 Asian Foreign Ministers meeting? enhance connectivity and resilience which company has recently been granted a direct broking license by irdai uh, that is coverzi what is the primary purpose of seva platform by sebi to enhance investors experience and accessibility of crucial information market information right what campaign did india pledged during the 46th session of World Heritage Committee that is Virasat Par Garv. Under the new RBI circular, what is required for all cross-border remittances irrespective of the transaction value? Form A2 is required. It is mandatory. That's an important RBI guideline. For all, all uh, cross-border remittances, Form A2 is mandatory. What is the maximum transaction value allowed without A2 form? Uh, in the previous circular, it was uh, 25,000 US dollars, but now for every transaction, A2 form is required. What is the primary objective of ex uh, the Exim Bank's government support supported uh, line of credit of $2.5 million to government of uh, government cooperative of Guana? to install solar power uh, plant at the airport at the Chedi Jagan International Airport. What is the annual limit under the LRS that is 2,50,000 US dollars? Which type of investments are now permissible under the new RBI guidelines for remittances to IFSC investments in listed securities on IFSC stock exchanges? What additional security measures must now validate each transaction by a remitter? Additional factor of authentication is required for every cross-border transaction. Uh, according to the recent RBI circular on domestic money transfer, and even the pre this one is also for the domestic money transfer. For the domestic money transfer, according to the latest RBI guidelines, what are the new requirements must banks adhere to for recording the beneficiary details? Name and address should be there of the sender or emitter. As per the new RBI guidelines on the domestic money transfer, on what basis must remitters be registered? 
verified cell phones and self certified officially valid document and address very important questions what is the limit imposed on primary urban cooperative banks regarding loans against shares and debentures 20% of their tier 1 capital can be lent against stocks and debentures 20% of tier 1 capital loans can be these loans against shares and debentures right in accordance with the revised guidelines in rbi circular what minimum percentage of urban cooperative banks aggregate loans and advances must be small value loans 40% of their loans must be small value loans right and as per the updated rbi guidelines what percentage of urban uh, cooperative banks aggregate loans must be small value loans by 2026 in the previous question it was by 2025 it should be 40 and by 2026 it should be 50 percent okay so according to rbi circular on the pca framework right now pc there is a new circular for urban cooperative banks now pca framework would be implemented to the ucbs so the quality of assets would uh, would be uh, the banks would be put under the pca the urban cooperative banks on the basis of capital asset quality and profitability what indicators will be tracked for the capital asset quality profitability uh, as per the pca framework CRAR, net NPA ratio and net profit. These are the three indicators on the basis of which uh, the urban cooperative banks be put under various, uh, you know, uh, PCA thresholds. To which tiers of primary urban cooperative banks does RBI circular PCA framework apply? Tier 2, Tier 3, Tier 4 uh, primary urban cooperative banks on Tier 1, it doesn't apply. What CRAR risk threshold one as defined in RBA circular on PCA framework for UCB, it is up to 250 basis point below the minimum regulatory requirement. What is the minimum regulatory requirement? That is 12%. So it is if it is less than 11.750%, uh, 75%, then it, it would be under the threshold one. According to the RBA guidelines for the PCA framework, which risk threshold corresponds to the net NP ratio of uh, more than equal to 12%, it is the threshold three, risk threshold three, okay. So when is bank generally placed under PCA based upon reported or audited annual financial results or ongoing supervisory uh, assessment by the RBI? What is required for a bank to exit from the PCA framework according to the RBA circulars for UCBs? No breaches and risk thresholds. If they recover, if the NPA net NPA is rate is very high uh, and they are able to, you know, recover the NPAs and if uh, they are able to bring in profit, they are able to bring in capital. The CRAR is now uh, under the required limit, then it will be out of the the PCA framework. According to the RBA circular for the PCA framework, what mandatory action is required under the risk threshold one bank to raise capital either from existing members or by issuing equity and other permissible capital instruments, they need to raise capital under the risk threshold two. what mandatory action is required restriction on branch expansion branch, there cannot uh, the urban cooperative bank cannot open new branches if it is under the risk threshold two. What discretionary action can be taken by uh, RBI? Special supervisory actions can be taken. What recent changes did RBI uh, took uh, make re regarding the fully accessible route for investment by non-resident? Non-resident cannot invest in 14 year and 30 year tenure government securities now onwards. What is the minimum default amount uh, for a borrower to be classified under the willful defaulter category 25 lakh rupees. So if the default is more than 25 lakh rupees that uh, that person becomes a willful defaulter after the audit committee's approval, right? Which committee is responsible for reviewing borrowers track record to ensure default was intentional identification committee. 
and the borrower get a 21 day notice show cause notice to clarify that he's not a willful defaulter how many days borrower get uh, to respond to show cause notice issued by the identification committee 21 days he get according to the new guidelines for RBI where can UCB transfer balances in the dividend equalization fund so whatever the money they have in the dividend equalization fund that should be transferred to the general reserves right according to the RBI guidelines what uh, what will the credit balance in general reserve or free reserve qualify uh, so it will be qualified after as a tier one capital. The general reserve is qualified for the tier one capital while the dividend equalization fund is a tier two capital. Which of the following payment system operator must comply with the RBI's guideline by April 2025 large PSOs. So according to the RBI guidelines uh, for the cyber resilience and digital payment securities, for non-bank PSOs, how much cyber security incidents must be reported to RBI within six hours of occurrence, okay? And that's, I guess, all for today. I hope you like the today's session, the hard work that we are doing for you, all the questions we did in the same class. So you can join the full IBPS RRB Scale 2 and Scale 3 course on bankexamstudy.com. Link is available in the description. If there is a, uh, any doubt in your mind, you can ask your doubts on our WhatsApp number. We are going to answer all your doubts. So list off all our students who took our courses in the past and they cracked their respective exams and I'm really, really happy for them. You can be one of them in the future and you will be one of them in the future. If there is any doubt in your mind, drop us a WhatsApp message. And that's all for today's students. Thank you and have a very nice day. Bye-bye.